Hello guys, welcome to my OBS Studio tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you the basics of OBS Studio and how to set it up ready to stream to any platform that it supports. One thing to note is that this tutorial is going to be specific to OBS Studio. I haven't used Classic in quite a long time so I'm not sure how similar they are but I'm sure you can follow this video and work out the differences yourself. They should be similar. Okay, so first off, let's go over the layout of the main screen of OBS. This is where you're going to be setting up your scenes by adding different sources to them. You will have a preview here of what the stream will look like. The various panels at the bottom allow you to do different things. You have your scenes, your sources, an audio mixer, scene transitions, and controls. So let's take a look at scenes and sources. Scenes are made up of sources. You could have scenes for different reasons. For example, you could have a scene that shows your gameplay along with your webcam. You could have a scene that says be right back or taking a break or the stream is starting soon or the stream has ended. Things like this. Sources are what make up your scenes. You could have a source that captures gameplay footage or a source of your webcam. You could have text or images or any number of things. Next up we have the audio mixer, which is pretty self-explanatory. It will allow you to mix your audio levels yourself, improving the overall audio quality on your stream. This is something that's very important to get right. You don't want audio from your games drowning out your voice, and likewise you don't want music drowning out both game audio and your voice. The mixer will help you get a good balance. A quick note, if you reduce the audio level by around minus six decibels, that's the equivalent of reducing the level by half. Same goes for the opposite way, if you increase it by 6 decibels it's the same as doubling the level of audio. So now we have scene transitions. This section here just sets up the default transition for when you select different scenes here. As you can see the default is a fade that lasts 300 milliseconds. You can add different things with the plus icon and you can change the duration here if you wish. This is something you should experiment with and come up with something that you think is nice. Okay, so here we have the control panel. Three of these options are obvious. Start streaming, start recording, and exit. If we press studio mode, we end up with a dual screen view. And what this does, it allows us to choose different scenes before we transition to them having a nice little transition button here when we're ready to change. And again, you can edit transitions here. However, not as many options are available. Okay, so let's try to quickly set up a scene for our stream. Turn off studio mode as we don't need it right now. And let's start by renaming the default scene. Let's change the name to gameplay. Once that's done, you can start to add sources. To start with, we're going to add a game capture source. You have the option to name it, and this is going to become especially useful when you have lots of scenes, because every unique source you create has to have a unique name, even between different scenes. For now, for this example, we can just leave it at game capture. So hit OK and you're presented with some more options for the game capture source. So what these do is it allows you to just adjust certain things. The most important option is the mode option. As you can see, there are three options. Capture any full screen application does what it says on the tin. Any application that is running full screen on your computer, this will capture it. Capture specific window allows you to choose a currently open window and start capturing it. If you want to use this mode with a game, then the game needs to be open first before you start to adjust this. Window match priority just lets you choose how specific you want the software to match the window title. Generally the default option is fine. The final option is capture foreground window with hotkey. This is useful 
if you're going to be playing a lot of games but don't necessarily want to stream them all or capture them all so it lets you set a hotkey and then when you press that hotkey this source will start to capture uh, whichever window is in focus for now we're just going to use capture any full screen application multi-adapter compatibility is useful if you have an SLI or crossfire setup for scaling lets you force an aspect ratio or resolution so if you're playing a game that is 800 by 600 for example you can force that into a widescreen resolution if you want allow transparency just lets you set transparency for this particular source limit capture frame rate limits the frame rate to whatever frame rate your stream has capture cursor is obvious using anti-cheat compatibility hook is recommended especially if you're playing things like MMOs or online games in general which might flag OBS as an attempt to cheat you may get banned so keep this enabled capture third party overlays such as Steam is personal preference I prefer not to have this on because if I'm using my uh, Steam overlay for example messages I'm typing to people will be broadcast and will show up on my stream so for now just leave everything as it is capture full screen application and hit OK and now we have that source in our scene you can lock it you can set it to invisible general stuff just like layers in Photoshop okay so now we're gonna add a second source hit the plus icon again and hit video capture device again you want to name it something useful we will rename this one to webcam jump scare alert hello so it, now the device is selected here uh, you have whatever video capture devices you have on your PC for me it's a webcam and face rig pro tip if you're using a Logitech webcam if you hit configure video and then go to advanced settings and turn off right light the performance will be a lot better I would recommend enabling deactivate when not showing it just saves resources if you switch to a scene where the webcam isn't there it's gonna turn it off and stop hogging resources as you can see the default resolution for this is 800 by 600 I think you can change that if you want to a custom resolution there we go it's like a widescreen up to you it depends what you want to do match output FPS is generally fine you don't want to mess with these if you want to flip the camera vertically you can don't see why you would really up to you do what you want um, and generally you don't want to mess with that just hit OK and now we have a webcam as you can see you can move the webcam around and resize it as well so again this is up to you where you want to put it or how big you want it if you hold shift when you're resizing something you can stretch it might need to know that letting go of shift will force it back to its original aspect ratio good stuff to know for now I'm gonna hide my ugly mug and we'll get back to the tutorial okay one thing to note like I said earlier the sources list acts like layers in Photoshop as such if the webcam is under the game capture and you're currently capturing a game the webcam won't be visible so that's something to keep in mind the order of your sources does matter okay so at this point with a webcam and a game capture set up you've got a pretty good basis for a decent stream there's nothing in the audio mixer yet but we'll get to that in a second 
Okay, so now we get into the nitty gritty stuff. We're gonna visit the settings button on the control panel. You could play around with these settings for hours if you wanted to, but hopefully I'll be able to give you a decent guideline. Now this is gonna get quite in depth, so try to bear with me, try to stay with me, try not to lose interest. Um, or if you don't want to listen to me, just play around with it. You can't go too far wrong that you wreck anything, you know? Okay, so we have the general settings. These are basic settings you probably won't need to mess around with too much. The snapping options are very useful for arranging your scenes. Uh, most of the rest of these are personal preference. Obviously, choose your language. Uh, you can choose the theme as well, although I don't use that. I actually haven't tried the themes. The dark one might be quite nice. Let's take a look. Oh. That is sexy. We'll go back to default for now, but I like that a lot. Okay. Again, personal preference. Just take a look through. Enable what you like. Disable what you don't like. Next, we have stream. So this is where you're going to choose which service that you want to stream to. So mine is already set up for Twitch, but as you can see, you have a whole host of options. YouTube is another popular one. Facebook Live even. I think that's actually a, a more recent one. That, that's quite cool. I might play with that later. Um, but yeah, you've got options. You can even stream to your own custom streaming server. But I have no experience with that, so I'm not going to try and help you with it. Uh, in terms of Twitch, you choose a server, the closest one to me, obviously, and you want to paste your stream key in here. It's blanked out because if I had your stream key, I would be able to stream to your account from my computer. I think this happened to streamers in the past, even popular streamers, where someone has managed to get their stream key and start streaming on their account you know they could stream whatever they wanted and just get them banned if they wanted to you know it's good to keep it a secret try never to reveal your stream key okay so now we have output this is where it starts getting fun okay to begin with yours will probably be set to simple i would switch it to advanced just so you have the extra options to play with if you want Okay, so you now have three tabs here. The main one being streaming. This is going to affect your stream. So, generally you want to keep audio track one checked. You can only stream one audio track at a time. The encoder, I have two options. Uh, the NVENC encoder is NVIDIA's encoder, I believe. It's what Shadowplay uses, uh, encoding done on the GPU, as far as I'm aware. Depending on your setup, your PC, this might give you better performance, it might not. It's worth a try. However, the default is X264, and this is the CPU encoder. It's the one I use. Like I said, give NVENC a try if you want. I would tick this because certain streaming services can be very picky with what they're receiving. You just want it, you don't want to cause any trouble. Um, so this will just force whatever service you're streaming to, just what they're expecting to receive, if that makes sense. Uh, the rate control, uh, CBR is generally fine, that stands for constant bit rate. Uh, just tries to keep a constant bit rate throughout your stream so there's no variations in quality. The bit rate I will probably come back to in a second because this is a very largely debated subject. Keyframe interval I believe Twitch recommends too so I would just use that. Um, CPU uses preset is a big one it has a very big impact on the performance of your computer as you can see they're done it's listed as 
from slow or very slow to ultra fast. The default is very fast, I believe. The slower you go, the more CPU is used to encode the video. Um, but the advantage of that is the video will look a lot better. But like I said, very fast is the default. You probably want to leave it on that. If you find your computer is handling it no problem, maybe try faster or fast. Um, I would say the slower presets are for uh, a multi PC streaming setup where you have a dedicated PC just used for encoding the video and sending it out. Profile uh, main is generally okay. Again, baseline would be a lower quality, more suited to mobile, I believe. High is higher quality, but main is great. I'm not too sure on these. I imagine it adds some sort of filter looking at the options. I've never used it. Um, so I couldn't honestly tell you. This section here is used for custom commands for the encoder. Again, I'm not too familiar with this, um, but like I said, it's just commands for the encoder, just to tell it to do certain things specifically. Again, unless you know what you're doing, there's not much point in putting anything here. Um, so yeah, bitrate. As I said, it's something that has just so many different opinions on it. There are two groups of people, generally speaking. There are the people that think you should just stream at the highest bit rate your internet is capable of, so you have the best quality. But then there's a, another group of people that are against that idea. They think you shouldn't stream at the highest quality you can or the highest bitrate because not everyone is going to be able to watch your stream if you have a high bitrate. So you have kind of a trade-off here. You have higher quality, less potential viewers, or lower quality, but more potential viewers. Again, it's up to you what you do, um, but I can guide you to sort of work out what bitrate would be best for you. So there's a Redditor in the Twitch subreddit. It goes by the name of Orem. He did a lot of testing and came up with a formula to help determine the best bitrate for what resolution you're streaming at. Okay. And what he found was you needed to aim for a bits per pixel density of 0.1. Okay, and this might sound very scientific to some of you, but the formula is quite simple and it's easy to do. You just plug the numbers into a calculator and it tells you what bitrate is best for what you're doing. So the formula is the pixel width times the pixel height. So basically your resolution width times your resolution height times the frames per second of your stream times 0.1, which is your desired fidelity. And then take that value and divide it by a thousand. And that will be the optimal bit rate for a decent quality for you. So let's run through an example of this. So if I quickly get the calculator up, you know, the formula is so simple, you don't even need the scientific mode. But we'll do an example. Let's say you want to do a 720p stream at 30 frames per second. Okay, you're aiming for the 0.1 fidelity. So like I said, the formula was pixel width times pixel height times frames per second times the fidelity that you want and then divide that by 100. So for a 720p stream, that would be the width 1280 times the height 720 okay times the frames per second big number okay 
but then you times it by the fidelity you want, which was found to be 0.1 is the desired one. Okay, so 2 million, nearly 3 million. Okay, now you take that answer and you divide it by 1000 and that gives you the bit rate required for optimum quality, okay? So if you want to, you can, can we copy this? No, we can't. So 2764, we'll leave off the point A, okay? 2765, we'll round it up. Now that's optimum. So what he's saying is anything above this number is going to be more wasteful, if that makes sense. It's going to have diminishing returns. So say you bumped up to double that, your quality would not be double because bumping up the bit rate higher than this point isn't as effective for the quality. A good thing to note as well is if you notice frames per second was in that equation. So if you can imagine 60 frames per second increases the required bit rate by a lot. Let's try the same calculation again. Okay, but we'll use 60 frames per second instead. So we have our bit rate down here for 30 frames. Let's see what it would be for 60. So 1280 by 720 by 60, okay, times 0.1, okay, and then you divide that by a thousand. So in order to stream the same resolution at the same quality at 60 frames per second, it's essentially double the frame rate, okay, which makes sense because you're doubling the amount of frames per second. So this is why people trying to stream 1080p at 60 frames per second is it's not really feasible, I would say. Like just because your computer and your internet can handle it doesn't mean it's a good idea because your viewers aren't gonna be able to watch it because the bit rate needs to be so high. And unless you have transcoding with Twitch, that's gonna be a problem. Streaming to YouTube, I think everyone gets transcoding, so that's a bit better. That means your viewers can change the quality they watch themselves. Whereas Twitch generally will give transcoding to partners first and then sort of hand it out to non-partners at will, I guess. It depends on their, their servers and how strained they are. So you're not always going to have transcoding which means your viewers can't always choose the quality they're watching. Which means if you're streaming at a very high bit rate, a lot of people just aren't going to be able to watch. And that's a very important thing to bear in mind. Okay, so moving on, we have the recording tab. Now this is very similar to the streaming tab, except it lets you record to file. You can choose the file format okay and you can also record multiple audio tracks which is great because you can have your game audio and your microphone audio on different tracks which means if you imported that recording into Sony Vegas for example you would have two audio tracks and you could adjust the volume independently after recording which is great but you guys might not be interested in recording. Again, the settings are the same. Just play around with it. Now, audio tab. This is something to bear in mind. A lot of people forget that audio bit rate is a thing. A lot of people are so preoccupied with their just their standard bit rate, they forget that audio adds to the bit rate too. I think Twitch recommends a bit rate of 160. I use 256 just for the extra bump of audio quality. But again, it's a matter of just testing it out. Try and use the lowest value that you're genuinely happy with. If you're using 160 but you don't like the quality of your audio, 
then just bump it up a bit because if you're not happy with your stream probably no one else is going to be either okay so now we're moving on to the actual audio tab here you can choose which um, audio devices you want to use so for example for desktop audio so this would be audio coming from your games or from uh, any music programs you're using or anything like that you're going to want to use the default device which for me is uh, Realtek speakers and again microphones you can choose whichever microphones you might have so whether that's your webcam microphone um, or not sorry no the webcam microphone is not there but you have for me I'll be using the Yeti you can use uh, stereo mix whatever you want uh, more Fox anything you select it here okay and you select it here you got your desktop now these two will now appear in audio mixer when we apply this okay sample rate generally you want to keep it 44.1 assuming that's the sample rate you're using for your computer um, stereo or mono is up to you obviously mono would be better in terms of bitrate stereo would be better in terms of quality you would have the left and right sound there so if we go ahead and apply this you now see my microphone and it's picking up and desktop audio for your game capture okay so let's move on to the video tab now there's not a lot of options here it's short and sweet you've got your base resolution which generally wants to be the native resolution of your monitor and you've got your output scaled resolution which is what's going to be sent to the stream as you can see for me I'm doing a 480p stream but that's because I'm using 60 frames per second it's completely up to you what you use but just double check with the equation I showed you earlier just plug the numbers in go for the 0.1 fidelity your frame rate just see what bitrate comes out um, and go from there downscale filter Langzos is the best bilinear is the fastest but Langzos is the best looking so use that if you can if you're having a performance impact just bring it down a bit okay nice okay so let's move on to hotkeys what's good about the hotkey page is you have your global hotkeys at the top here and then you have hotkeys for each scene so as you add more scenes they will appear down here and also for different sources and even your microphones or whatever okay so you can set a key to mute just your desktop audio or just your microphone this hotkey here would apply just to the game capture source so again if you were using hotkey to capture the window you can set that here and it's good to note that anything with a star next to it that means that they're linked so if I set F8 for that it will be set for that automatically as well okay again it's up to you what you do here finally advanced you generally don't want to mess with this stuff um, one thing you might want to change is the process priority it just um, changes the priority that OBS has for your CPU again the video you don't really want to change none of this disabling Windows audio ducking can be useful because that stops Windows from adjusting the volume of anything without you knowing about it but generally you want to leave this stuff alone um, obviously if you want to delay your stream for however much time that's up to you okay so one last thing are filters I will go over these briefly OBS lets you add filters to sources and uh, audio sources as well for example if your microphone is picking up a lot of noise 
For example, if I stop talking now, you'll see my microphone still picking up noise. Yeah, and that might be a computer fan, noise from outside, whatever. So what you can do, if you click the cog and click filters, click the plus and add a noise gate. Okay, just keep that named as noise gate. You can actually set up when the microphone opens and closes along with an envelope as well. So if I stop talking now, you can probably see it already, the microphone cuts out. Yeah, and that cuts out any noise that you don't want people to hear. Just picks up when you're speaking, which is great. And these values might need adjusting so you can have the close threshold a lot lower. Um, again, the open threshold, you can set so high you can't even hear your voice. Um, you want to find the sweet spot where your voice activates it. Yeah? The, these options here, the attack is how quickly the microphone opens in milliseconds. Hold is how long the microphone stays open in milliseconds. And release is how fast it shuts off again in milliseconds. There are other filters to play with. Again, it's just about playing with them and experiment and finding something you like. One useful thing for video sources, if you right click it and choose filters, you can add an effect filter. And one I recommend using, not in every case, but in some cases would be color correction, okay? And what this allows you to do, it has loads of options. Um, allows you to adjust the brightness or the contrast or the saturation of whatever footage is being captured. So it makes the footage look warmer or brighter and again, you don't need to use this, but it can help if, for example, people on your stream are complaining that it's too dark, but the brightness in the game is set to max, you can adjust it extra here if you need to. And that's everything for now. You should be good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll try and get back to you, although I'm notorious for being terrible at replying, but I will try my best. Um, don't forget to like the video if it's helped you. And of course, come and visit me at Twitch. Follow, I'll follow you. Perhaps we can stream together sometime. And there we go, that's it, that's all there is. Catch you later, guys.